Three one. Three one to Man U. And then hopefully the British consortium will come in and buy the oh. club to spare us another foreign state owning another club. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Yahoo columnist Neil Humphreys. And me, Yahoo editor Chia Han Kyung. And we have Eddie here. Hello. Look, he's from Lion City. He's a Lion City Sailors fan, okay? Yep. What a jersey. Thanks for coming on, yeah. Eddie. How long have you been a Lion City Sailors fan? Well, only a couple of seasons, obviously. <laughs> obviously, yeah. But, but before that? Before Home that. United, yeah. Home United, fantastic. So, number of years, yeah. Mm. Wow. Great. Red. Well, we're going to get stuck in a Home United later, but you're an Arsenal fan, right? Yes. So oh. we'll start with Arsenal. What a season. <laughs> what a season. I thought it was all over. A few minutes to go against, who was it? Aston Villa, Aston Villa, right? I thought, here we go. The implosion begins. Then Manchester City did what they did. Arsenal did what they did. Eddie, what did you make of it? It's pretty poetic that a mm. uh, former Arsenal goalkeeper was the one who <laughs> did in the winner for us. Martinez! After, after wasting all the time he did in that game. Oh, so it was man. pretty He's, sweet, actually. We were, I was watching a match. I was like, can he just get on with it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just... Master provocator. I must right. admit, I, I thought this was it. I, yeah. I wrote the piece last week. I thought this was going to be the implosion. I thought this was going to be the beginning of the end. But you've gained, Eddie. You've actually improved your margin yeah. at the top of the table. You must be, you know, you'd have biting the hands off before the game to get that. Yeah, and it's not often you see like Haaland missing from four yards out yeah. it, against Forrest. Yep. So really, Forrest did us a great favour. Mm. And Chris Wood got a goal, so. Yeah. But obviously, I mean, if you, if, if, if you will have win the title in May, would you look back at this weekend and say, oh, this is the, one of the biggest turning points of the season? Definitely. Mm -hmm. I think um, the margins, it just shows the margins at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so exciting and really, I, I hope that it is a defining point in the season. Yeah. My only concern with Arsenal, they still look weary. That's not a criticism. I mean, they've overachieved with a limited size squad for much of the season. But watching that game, Inketia has done such a fantastic job covering, you know, for Jesus, but he's not Haaland and he's not Marcus Rashford. And there hasn't really been an EPL team who's won a league without a, you know, a, a commanding striker, with the obvious exception of Manchester City, but they're the greatest team of the last 10 or 15 years, so they play a completely different way. I do worry slightly that Inketia is always going to miss more chances than he scores despite the best intentions, despite working so hard. And ultimately, that might be the difference. Yeah, and tightness factors into it as well, mm. I think. He's being overplayed. I don't think he gets substituted anymore. Hasn't, he's played every minute since the yeah, World Cup. There, there's no one else to come in for him. Right. So that has to you know weigh on him a little. Of course, I think what Gabriel Jesus brings to the team as well is not just the goals. right? He, in fact, he scores fewer goals than Enketia, but... He changes the way the left side of Arsenal's attack operates. Mm, right. Martinelli, Zinchenko and him, they form a very nice left pot over there and they mm. so sick interplay mm -hmm. that Enketia is more of a penalty box finisher. Right. So he doesn't really replicate that as well, I think. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to see Jesus back. I think it will be the boost that we need and hopefully sooner, sooner rather than later. When is he due to ba be back? March, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a long time, man. <laughs> it's a long time. I was yeah. expecting. Okay. Yeah, no, we'll but we, I mean, three point, two points ahead with a game in hand. Okay. It's not the worst place to no, be. Yeah, so, no, I mean, you know, anyone else? West Ham would bite bloody hand <laughs> off to be out of the bottom three. Yeah. So let's get some perspective. No, they're and, in and a great also, spot. Yeah, and also I think this season for neutral fans like like me on Arsenal, I think Bukayo Saka has been a revelation this mm. this this season. Mm. Scored a brilliant goal at uh, Aston Villa. You know, yeah. I, I and then I was looking at the the Twitter, and then there's there's one there's one very nice clip after after the Aston Villa game. They're asking um, Arsenal fans outside mm. the stadium, <coughs> would you rather uh, not win this no win this <laughs> season, uh, win win the Premier League this season, or uh, not win. Let me think. Get it right. Get it right. Would not win, but keep Saka. Uh, uh, would you not yeah. win the season, but keep Saka, or win the season, but have to sell Saka? And then everybody like, oh, <laughs> that's a, oh, that's that's you can't answer that question. And then they think about, I think I will keep Saka because I think next season we will win again. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think of that? I mean, I think. Go on, you go first. It's You're a tough Arsenal one. Fan. It's like asking you, you want to chop your left hand or your right hand off. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a tough one. Um. I think actually with all the money coming to the league, 
It's hard to say this, but I'd rather win this season. Of course! <laughs> yeah, you take the title, you, you take what you get, right? And yeah. I mean, Liverpool has shown when, when they sold Coutinho that it's, it's not game over even if you sell mm. your biggest star. Okay. Coutinho was as much, I think, um, pivotal to that Liverpool team that Klopp was trying to build as Saka is today. Mm. And yet, after that, who did they emerge with? Alisson, Virgil van Dijk. So, but okay, okay. Not, fair enough. Yeah. I, I, I get but your Liverpool point. are not Arsenal, right? I, I, yeah. I, I, with all disrespect, Coutinho, with all, mm. I think I, 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 I love to watch him play as well. But Saka comes from Arsenal Academy. I think, I think it's such yes. a success story that they, you know that, that sort of justify all the Wenger say, you know, we are rebuilding, we are building the team, we are building the team all the way until Ateta, and then now you see a really truly a. Uh, uh, b- uh, blossoming talent yeah. that comes out from the Arsenal Academy is so symbolic of uh, Arsenal's success. Yeah, yeah. But so, you you build a team to win titles, right? And so uh, when you get the title, you gotta win it. I think okay. I, it's. <laughs> I mean, I know it's good fun. I've seen the debate: Saka versus league title. There is no debate. You take the league title. The title I that. feel this is not Liverpool. They do not have the squad depth. They do not have the resources. They win the title now, or frankly speaking, they probably don't win the title. There is, I think Arsenal are much closer to Leicester City than Liverpool in a sense that there's a real now or never for me. Manchester United are going to be sold, whether it's to Qataris or to um, the British Consortium. The, the point is, the biggest club in the world is about to have almost nigh on unlimited resources. Yeah. Put Manchester United with unlimited resources, nobody gets close. As, as Gary Neville says, they blow Manchester City out of the water. It's a terrifying prospect. <laughs> so if you're Arsenal, you win now. You win now. Uh, you don't worry about Saka or Inketier or Jesus. <laughs> you win the title now and worry about the consequences uh, later. Well, fair enough. <laughs> I, 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 I still think Saka should stay. I don't think he'll go. Do you think he'll go? I don't think he'll go. I don't think he'll go. I don't think there's anywhere else he'll, he'll go. But let us know what you think. Will Saka stay at Arsenal? Should they win the title this season? Or will they win it at all if they don't win it this season? Send all of your comments to... Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Brilliant. Now, I alluded to it there. Mm. Manchester... United. Now, I wrote a column for Yahoo this week. Two things I want to talk about. The first thing is their title prospects, which you must be delighted to talk about. (laughs) And the second thing is the takeover. Let's do the title prospects first. I said in the column for Yahoo, I'm not saying they are going to win the title. We're not getting carried away with hyperbole, but they're in it now. There, There is no doubt in my mind. If you look at the top five teams, including Tottenham and Newcastle, Manchester United are the informed side. Clear template, clear philosophy, clear way of playing. Solid first 11. Not a great squad. Not a great squad. Excellent manager. Fantastic manager. He is the signing of the season for me. In in any capacity, Eric Ten Hag is the signing of this season. What he's done with that club in this week alone, they've got a chance of beating Barcelona. They're in the uh, League Cup final. And then they've got an outside shot of challenging for the EPL. Unbelievable. Yeah, and from where they came from, you exactly. remember the start of the season, they were so terrible. They lost to Brighton or 4-0? Or Br- Brentford, Brentford, or Brentford, Brentford, Brentford? Brentford. Brentford 4-0. And everybody was saying that, oh, this, this is going to be a terrible season. Everybody was so pessimistic. And then, smartly, they got rid of Cristiano Ronaldo. That was key. That was key. And, and you know, slowly you can see the team starting to gel, starting to play the way the intensity, that the the, the the kind of um, um, gang honus associated to Manchester United, you know, Marcus Rashford gained back his confidence, scored 24 or 20, 25 goals. 25 already. now, yeah. Uh, absolutely brilliant this season. And you know, and like you say, the other teams in the, at the top, Arsenal have, well, obviously another good season, but you know, they have their depth issues. Uh, Man- Manchester City are a bit struggling here and there. Um, Spurs Our Spurs Our Spurs <laughs> <laughs> So you need to say New, Newcastle are work in progress as well So you know Especially Manchester United If they can Sort of like Carry on There's this, there's this thing called momentum And then you know mm. And I think they, they They can They are starting to Make me feel Like they are a likeable team You know And that's from a Liverpool fan Francis it's speaking it's, it's hard for me to say it, But you know you're, you're, you know, Doing the things right Which is also troubling For Liverpool fans yeah. <laughs> And so and so I think Neutral fans Might be looking at them And saying Well can they do it or not And that's interesting mm. What do you think? <laughs> Menu <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, I was talking to you guys about this before the show started, and I think it's funny how we always wish the best for our friends. Like we want, the, we want them to get married, we want them to get a promotion, we want good things to happen to them. But when it comes to football, we want the worst things to happen <laughs> to them. So I hope that United never win a title again. But let's oh, <laughs> hope. That's, that's, that's hope. With the title. That's good. That's Unfortunately, good. I have to admit that this season they are looking good. Yeah, and yeah. all it takes that's is a few slip ups, and they'll be right in there if they're not already in there. Mm, yeah. And that scares me actually, because I was hoping that you know Arsenal would yeah. just have to focus on Man City, but now we have this other team to worry yeah. about. Yeah. So, yeah, Eric Ten Hag has <laughs> made more players better, has improved more players on the training ground this season than any other club in EPL. A, a couple of years <laughs> ago, that was Klopp's thing and Guardiola's, but Klopp's speciality was I'll take the Robinson, I'll take the Trent Alexander Arnold and I'll make them world class. Mm. What he's done, if you just work from the back, this is the best I've seen De Gea in years. Mm. One of the saves he made at the at the weekend was oh. out of this world, <laughs> yeah. reminding people again that I still believe that when it comes to pure shot stopping, pure reflexes, I don't think anybody gets close to De Gea. I include Allison. I include Edison in that. They may be better all-round keepers with their distribution, but when it comes to pure shot stopping, reflexes, he is a bloody cat. He is a dropped Fantastic. cat. He's extraordinary. So you've got that. Luke Shaw, unbelievable. Uh, Diego Dalot, De uh, yeah. great improvement from him. And then you go further forward. Fred. Fred. Fred was a joke. Fred was a joke a couple of years ago. Right? Every punchline was Fred. Fantastic. Seven from nine points they've taken without Casemiro, mm. which is extraordinary. And Marcus Rashford now already looks the natural heir apparent to Harry Kane in the England squad. Mm. Again, a year ago, unthinkable. No. He couldn't even get in the Manchester United team. Now he looks ready to take it's, over from Harry Kane for it's, England. It's all That's all Ten, ten Hag. It's all on Ten Hag. Yeah. All Ten Hag. Mm. So, sorry, Liverpool. Sorry, Tottenham. <laughs> sorry, him. <laughs> uh, they could do it they could do it and I think it'll but, make a great you know, end to the season it has to be typically, typically Manchester United just as they are beginning to be likeable <laughs> you know everybody's neutral fans like okay can they do it and then comes the news that you know they're gonna be there might be a bit coming in from a lot of people um, Qataris Saudi Arabians Jim Ratcliffe for, for, for a British uh, billionaire and then, you know, we're like, oh, here we go again. Mm. There's going to be more money for them, which are, they've, already, they've got a lot of money, but and they're already ha unhappy with the Glazers and something. And then this thing happens again. I, I don't know. If just like It feels like a deflating mm. kind of news that this, this nonsense is going to start again. Well, the Man U supporters groups have already come out mm. strongly mm. against the Qatari bid. Just to recap, there were, there were two bids that made the so-called deadline. There was Jim Radcliffe's mm. British Consortium and there was the uh, Qataris, <laughs> uh, Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani's. <laughs> now he claims to be independent, but he's wow. directly linked to the family, the royal yes. family, which is also directly linked to the team that owns PSG. Mm. And according to UEFA, no one revenue source can own two clubs. They already think they can somehow bend the rules to get yeah. around that. It will not be a good day no. if three clubs are effectively state-owned, <clears throat> foreign state-owned, mm. particularly three nation states that have been involved in the Gulf blockade in the recent years, if you want to get geopolitical about it, <laughs> right? But this is not a good thing. It doesn't care who the clubs are. I don't care whether you're Man U or Man City or Newcastle. It's not about that. It could be West Ham, Southampton and Leeds. The prospect of three clubs being state-owned as part of this wider geopolitical exercise, which is what it is, cannot be seen as a positive in any way. I mean, I, find me the positive here. I mean, I would love to hear it. What is the positive here? Money. <laughs> yeah, money. Money. <laughs> from, but, from Trophies, from, maybe. You know. <laughs> but, but still, I mean, it's all on such a... I mean, I don't. I can't even guarantee that, you know, having... If, if the Qatari deal goes through, that they're going to be a success. Look at PSG. 11 years... They 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 had the they they own the team not a single European cup forget about the French league then then that's different. But I think that's the point. Yeah. I think they're not pushed enough every week yeah. domestically. So the step exactly. up from from uh, league one to Champions League is too correct, big. Correct. And but they could okay. Besides the trophies, they they signed the top players Neymar, Messi, uh, Mbappe. But here they here they are situated in one of the most uh, fertile talent. Uh, areas of uh, in Europe, France, Paris, 
where you know the immigrants, the, the 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 immigrants came in, came in, and then most of them are living in the uh, outskirts of the yeah. area where 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 Paris Saint Germain are. Mm. But they have nobody. They didn't bring any of those talents up. Talents you know, include uh, Kingsley Coman, Mbappe. Mbappe had to go to Monaco before he was bought, bought over to to, to PSG. Uh, the uh, Adrian Rabiot. That's the only only person that came up from the the PSG yeah. ranks. Paul Pogba, Ngolo Kante. All all help uh, France to win the World Cup uh, in, uh, in 2018, and it's not true. They they didn't come through PSG. Yeah. They come through other clubs, so they did nothing to bring up those 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 talents. And you know, Manchester is also a very fertile place to, to for youth youth talents. Mm. Did, were they, are they going to ignore them again and then just say, well, we'll just keep on buying the new players? I mean, in fairness, Manchester mm. City, you know, yeah, owned by Abu Dhabi, have got a fertile academy, bought likes of Foden yeah. through and others. I, it, that depends on the manager. The mm. manager has said this week he's not going to get involved. He will put the team first, mm. which is a smart thing. Smart. Better thing to say to what Guardiola did, which was to get head first into this maelstrom <laughs> of a, you know, political hot potato. So... I think Ten Hag will put the squad first. Mm. I don't think he'll take the pressure from any owner. That's the perception I get mm. to have this player or that player. He'll say, no, I'll, I will have this one from the academy or I'll have this one from the transfer market. I don't know. But the, the broader picture here for, for viewers and listeners to think about is Manchester United already have this extraordinary, unrivaled global goodwill that is, set, is only closely matched by Liverpool. No other club in world football gets close. Real Madrid, Barcelona, nobody, right? If you tally that or marry that with the sovereign fund wealth of yeah. Qatar, it is terrifying on every conceivable <laughs> level. There is nothing positive about this if you're not a Manchester United fan because f financial fair play will mean nothing because they will generate the revenues. This is a club that has a paint sponsor, a noodle sponsor, a microphone <laughs> sponsor, a cup sponsor, I don't know, a light sponsor. They've already got every kind of sponsor legitimately. Put that with Qatari funds, it's over. Give them all the trophies yeah, now. Give them the European Super League. Of, of, of. But I can see many <laughs> fans watching this going, so what? Yeah, yeah that's right. Bring on the trophies. Bring on the trophies. I don't know. But yeah. it's a real moral issue here that... Will it be discussed at EPL level? I don't know. Let's see. All right, let's wrap this thing up on the EPL. Newcastle, Liverpool coming up, and then Newcastle. Oh, menu. And uh, which one? Newcastle, Menu. Is it? Oh, Newcastle, Liverpool. Yeah, yeah, the League Cup. But Newcastle, yeah. Liverpool just played, yeah. is what I meant to mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Liverpool? Again, relief that, you know, that they're getting some momentum ahead of the Real Madrid match. I think. Um, there are good signs that you no know, Kakpo and Nunes are coming into uh, uh, actually being influential. So there yeah, are good signs, but again, um, the the feeling in the the, the fans is like, uh, like let's let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Still a long way to go. Take take it step by step. Good next match is against Palace in uh, uh, in, in 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 the league. It's winnable, but it's gonna be tough as uh, again away. Um, but Real Madrid is a the the key match. Uh, I, I don't know what I think we've. Probably played the game when this one comes out, um, but okay. I think I think there's a bit of confidence that we can get a result from from there. But again, everybody's like after all the being burned from 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 the start of the season. I know, like okay, let's see, let's see. <laughs> what do you think, Liverpool? Oh, actually, on the comment on Newcastle, I, I yeah. thought it was a different Newcastle. Yeah, after the red card, I thought it was gonna be like four, five, six, mm. but. They even panicked Liverpool a bit. Yeah, you know, they did. Their play. So oh. I'm actually really looking forward to the League Cup final. I think, think it would be a great final. Yeah. And it's a possibility Carrius may play, right? <laughs> that'd be, that'd the old be. Liverpool guy from the Champions League yeah. final. If you don't remember, he made those mistakes famously against Real Madrid. I've always felt a bit sorry for Carrius yeah, yeah, because he was thrown in at the deep end. He's yeah. not a bad keeper. Yeah, but he just got. I would. I would. I'm a romantic at heart. I'd love Carriers to have a good game oh, and get some vindication. I think, I think most of the Liverpool fan fan base. I think they want right? him to He's have a great game. He's not a bad guy. Yeah. He just made Especially a couple of mistakes. Especially if he says against Man U, they'll be even happier. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go down the line. Let's have some predictions. League Cup final, Man U, oh, Newcastle. Man, I think Man U might still edge it about one nil, but mm. but it's gonna be a fantastic game. I think. 
Zero zero Newcastle on pins. Oh, well, I'm on a run, of course, because I said Tottenham would win two nil, which there's no prizes for that. Of course, they were going to win two nil. West Ham are crap, but um, this one is comfortably, comfortably Man U for me. I think minimum two goals. Wow. I, I think Man U. Do you U think Nick, Nick Pope not being on? I mean. Yeah, and I, I, I'm contradicting myself because I want Carriers to play well. I don't think that's going to have a massive impact. I just think Rashford is unstoppable at the moment. Fernandez is fantastic. Right mm. through the team. Confidence is there. 3-1. 3-1 to Man U. And then hopefully the British Consortium will come in and buy the oh. club to spare us <laughs> another foreign state owning another club. But let us know what you think. Who's going to win the League Cup final this weekend? Will Carrier shine or will he flop once more? Let us know. Send all of your comments, queries and questions to Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. Fantastic. That's part one. Do come back to check on part two, where we'll be talking Singapore football again with this chap and his Lion City Sailors. Are they going to sweep all <laughs> next season? See you in part two.